I uh, was born behind our house. We had a very small kitchen yeah. where my mother was. And when she was there, Humphrey wanted to come on the earth. So you popped. Uh, so I popped yeah. and they had to call everyone. Welcome to Development Dynamics with Maxi, the platform where we have we listen to and have conversations with leaders and practitioners in the development field as they suss out meanings from their life, meanings and moments from their journey, what uh, their experience, especially in the development sector and in doing social good has been. This time around, we are glad to have crossed over the border. We are in Uganda um, to follow the story of one of the leading social entrepreneurs, advocates and leaders that there is in this country and in the region. Um, Humphrey is who we have today on, on set and uh, thank you very much for hosting us at your thank place. You. This is a beautiful, lovely, lovely place. Thank, thank you, you for the setup, thank you for the team. Um, and greetings from Nairobi, <laughs> which is where we are regularly situated and um, we hope we can get to host you there many yeah, more times. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so right now I think uh, Nairobi and Uganda are the same. Nairobi and Kampala. And Kampala. Yeah. Uh, Kenya and, and uh, uh, Kenya and Uganda are the same because yeah. we are now all East Africans. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and I'm also happy to be on this show. Thank you very much. Yeah. So um, I'd like us to start by going back to b b before Humphrey was Humphrey. Yeah, yeah. Your pre-birth what where do you come from what are the things that maybe you had or that your parents or you know your uncles aunties told you about your history would like just to for you to be able to trace back your history a little bit often that has a lot of uh, reflection and meaning in what we are um, yeah. in present day so if you can help us journey back to your origins Yes, yeah, so um, my name is Ham Humphrey Naimanya. Mm -hmm. uh, Humphrey Naimanya is a very We pronounce it Nahimanya. Nahimanya. All right. oh, okay, yeah. Nahimanya. Yeah. So Nahimanya or Nabimanya means uh, he knows. Okay. I was given that name by my father. Mm -hmm. uh, and my father gave birth to me when he was 78 years old. What? Yes. Wow. That's the most uh, interesting part. So I grew up with wow. a grandpa <laughs> who was my original father. Yeah. Uh, but the most interesting part, I was born from a small village called uh, Katereza. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting village, mm -hmm. very hilly, amazing, good weather. In the north, south? Uh, it's in the southwest. Okay. It's in Rampala district, mm -hmm. uh, formerly part of Umbara district. Mm -hmm. um, so when I was born, I've, myself, I don't have a hospital uh, birth certificate. You get it? So meaning that I was not born in a hospital. Yeah. I was born behind our house. We had a very small kitchen yeah. where my mother was. And when she was there, Humphrey wanted to come on the earth. So you popped. Uh, so I popped yeah. and they had to call everyone. Oh. They, they had a very strong support system yeah. uh, in my village way back, yeah. whereby everyone, every woman at least, knew how to be a midwife. Okay, he so knew how very to, nice. So you know, midwifery and traditional and bath traditional attendance. Bath. Yeah. attendance so mm. there are more traditional what we call traditional bath attendants no. but yeah they are the original bath yeah. attendants yeah. because before hospitals yeah. you know these guys knew what to do exactly and uh so when humphrey i got born in 1988 your, your dad was 78 but your mom my mom was about 40 all right 40 41 um uh, key reproductive age period. yes yeah. key reproductive age. and were you the last born very last born <laughs> the last last born yeah Interestingly, my mom started giving birth at the age of 13 years. Oh, yeah. so you have a bit of your people you'd call your ne nieces and nephews who are much older than you? Very older. <laughs> my father started giving birth in 19, 1930, 30, 34. That means it's a very... You're a large family? Yes, it's, it's quite a large family, but yeah. most of them departed the earth. Okay. And uh, my, at least the most interesting part about my father, he used to, he told me a lot of history mm. in his family. Mm. And uh, I'm, our generation, let's say my grandparents, mm -hmm. that I've never seen in my entire life, because mm -hmm. my grandfather died in uh, 19, 19, 1918. Yeah, whoa. That's when... Uh, that's when World actually, War II 1918, period. 1920. Also, they don't, you know, the years yeah. by that oh, time they're not yeah. count. Between 1918 to 1921. 
that's when my uh, grandfather passed. His father, your His dad's father. father. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Then my great grand, my great grandfather. Yeah. The, the the brother. Yeah. Was one of the people they took as slave trades. Mm. Those days. Mm. So if you see the Jason Deuro Ti yeah. resembling me, maybe there's a <laughs> <laughs> you should do that tracing. <laughs> so they should do this tracing yes. back to me. You actually look like. Uh, uh, be, be gross. What is the? <laughs> uh, there's some guy. They always uh, some basketballer. They always say that we quite really resemble a lot. Very interesting. But you see, that's why we are all connected. So I'm mm. part of like my his the history of my family. Yeah, is quite really interesting because yeah. I've been. Uh, it's quite near of what really happened even before Europeans coming mm. to to the country. Yeah. But nevertheless, coming back to Humphrey. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when I was born, unfortunately enough, after nine months. Uh, my mother passed on. Okay. And uh, when she passed on, of course, it was due to stroke mm. and uh, she had like uh, throat cancer. Mm. But also by that time, we didn't know much mm. about, you know, cancer or something. Because yeah. this is when you kind of know that, oh, maybe my mother died to a related disease like mm. this, so that means it was cancer. Mm. But as you know, like tradition, like village and whatever, we have a lot of wrangles with our step, uh, step, like stepmothers and whatever. Mm-hmm. They have these issues of uh, they may be tra- like uh, witchcraft yeah. and mm. everything they do. Mm. Is uh, that a big issue here in Uganda, or uh, was it then? Uh, it was it then. Mm. then. Then it was a very big issue, mm. uh, and and also a family rivalry. If you have two wives or three wives, mm. you know the kids and so mm. many things like mm. that. But uh, fortunately enough that my father really loved us so much. Mm. He loved all his children. He mm. treated them equally. Mm. He gave them all the best, good education when he had money. Uh, but for us, when we were born, of course, he was old. He didn't have enough energy. Yeah. He had saved quite a lot of money in mm. land, so we had mm. a lot of land. Mm. And uh, education was now becoming more serious yeah. at that time. And also more expensive. And more expensive. Mm-hmm. And uh, so when my, my most of my stepbrothers and, and sisters, they mm. went to very good schools. Mm-hmm. And uh, my brothers, that on my mother's side, we uh, they also went to good schools because my father really tried, but mm. they had a level where they stopped. Mm. And uh, so my sister, who's now who's like my mother, because mm-hmm. she raised me up at the age of nine months, mm. she you know had a, a, a husband uh, mm. that uh, they were living back then together, mm. and uh, <coughs> she brought, decided to bring me as a child. Mm. And uh, that was my fortunate bit that I had to travel to Kampala in the city uh, and leave my brothers and sisters in the village mm. because I was the, yo- I was yeah. the youngest, yeah. I had no mother, yeah. and so my sister had to really carry That's her. the first one, like one of the elder sisters? My, yeah, elder mm. sisters. So mm-hmm. I had to carry me and, uh, and, and come to Kampala. Mm. But the story about that is that uh, when she got married, uh, she came to Kampala to study. Mm. But the man who brought her to Kampala to educate her, she ended up being a wife, oh, you know, as okay. a teenager. Mm. And my sister, who's my mom, now I start talking about like my mom because she's my mother. Yeah, uh, she had no, <coughs> she had never seen her teenage growth as mm. a child. Mm. She has never experienced dating like any other mm. person. Like a very exciting girl, you yeah. know, like her dreams were kind of shattered by then mm. because this rich man decided to marry her. Yeah. So after a few, I think, years or like one year or two, the man mm. died of HIV. Oh, you get it. So, so that's the very early years of HIV. Of HIV. This is about like 1992. 92, okay. Yeah, 1991 mm. actually. Mm. You mm. know, it was deadly. Mm. 89, mm. it was really deadly. Mm. And uh, and it, the, the HIV was so much surrounded with a lot of stigma. I can imagine. It was surrounded with a lot of discrimination. Mm. And my sister was totally very, she was very discriminated, very stigmatized within the communities that we are living in. Mm. But even that stigma and discrimination <coughs> was translated to me as a child. Oh. Because everyone knew that she was my mother mm. and the husband who had passed on mm-hmm. was HIV positive, was mm. my father. Mm. So many that this baby is also HIV, HIV positive. positive. Yeah. So growing up in that kind of stigma, it yeah. was really quite worse. Mm. Growing up with our neighbors that you're playing with them, but at the end of the day, they even would come and ask, which plates do you guys use so that we don't, like they couldn't even eat at home. Yeah. You know, and can't share a spoon, and can't, share, can't a plate. share a plate, can't share a spoon, mm. and I could see it, you know, like with my own eyes. So it was quite rough moments for her. Mm. Then uh, she started seeking for knowledge. We would go together to churches mm. and uh, you know, like 
to pray, you know, like everywhere where there was hope of healing, mm. trust me, she would go there. Mm. Mm. Every kind of, uh, let's say there's a new hub that has come on yeah. board, yeah. she would she, take it. Yeah. it. Like she lived with it mm. until like, you know, she started now seeking for knowledge. Mm. You get it? Mm -hmm. for, med for proper medical attention, mm. for proper counseling, mm. for psychosocial support. Mm. We have a joint uh, research center, which is GSRC that she used to go. Mm. And uh, by that time, even they had invented in terms of uh, dr like tr uh, drug trials. Yeah. She did all those oh, she drugs. Oh, she was a pa trial participant. Trial participant. Mm. Just she wants to get, you know, mm. like a cure. Keyword, yeah. Mm. She would, I would see my sister swallow like about like 30 tablets. Oh my goodness. In a day. Yeah. And I'm like, I think, I'm also having it. Why is she yeah. not giving me medication? Yeah. And she would tell me that you don't have HIV like me. Mm. And I don't want you to be like me. Mm. And she preached, like I started hearing HIV, mm. like my, when my mind had even started maturing. Mm. You get it? Because mm -hmm. she was really talking about it. Mm. The more she talked about it, the more support that she got. Yeah. The more my family members really knew. Mm. She faced a lot of stigma. Mm. Like the man that really passed on left a few properties mm. for her. Mm -hmm. Most of them were taken because everyone knew that she's going to die soon. As well. Oh. Do you understand? Yeah. That? Even if let's say she made with one property, they were like, it's okay. Mm. She will die and mm. we shall have back her what? Mm. So she was like on a countdown. Mm. You know, of people. Yeah. You get it. And remember that you as a child, you are around people that are even talking about her. Mm. And I would feel like it's so damaging, bad. yeah. You get it. Mm. It was damaging me. Mm. And uh, so Meanwhile, she, were you getting educated? No, this this one I'm talking about my early years. Mm. Like about let's say one year to mm. about four okay. years to All six right. years. That very early child Because time. I started my nursery lesson. Uh, in primary, uh, in, uh, sorry, when I was five years. Mm. So I went to a kindergarten mm -hmm. around the area I was staying. Mm. Then in 96, I joined primary mm -hmm. at uh, Chitebi Primary School. Mm. Chitebi? Yeah. School Where is Chitebi. that? It's uh, in, in uh, Rubaga, in okay. Kampala. Mm -hmm. And P1 as in boarding. Mm -hmm. And why mm -hmm. is, yes, by P1 as in a boarding school. And why that is because, you know, she couldn't handle it. Mm. She was by herself, she was looking for whatever, she couldn't manage to even get her maid to look after me. Mm. Uh, she, you know, my brothers was, were in the village, so mm. they're still going to school. Mm -hmm. And her own children? Yeah, she didn't have children. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So, so you were her the, child? Oh, I was her mm. child. Mm. So when I went to boarding school, mm. you know, I started studying, you know, in a boarding school. Mm -hmm. At that age? At that age. And uh, she had got a partner that both of them were living HIV positive. Mm -hmm. And also, them living positively, they decided to advocate for positive living. Uh -huh. So as they're advocating for positive living, mm. because the partners are a bit quite famous in the army, mm -hmm. uh, so there will be newspapers okay. talking about themselves how mm. they have HIV. Mm. They will advocate for uh, mm. for 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 for, for like a proper environment whereby mm. there's stigma, no stigma free, mm. stigma free, discrimination mm -hmm. free. Mm. And the more they're in newspapers, mm. the more the teachers at school are reading these newspapers. Oh. The more they're like, okay, identifying you. They're mm. identifying me. Mm. So now stigma again continues. Continues in you. school. Mm. I remember in '97 when I got chicken pox. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! It was Everyone the most knew. nightmare. Yeah. Actually, in '90 like in '97. So how even got chicken pox? I wanted to come back home. Mm -hmm. You get it. So mm -hmm. I see everyone who's getting chicken pox is it's being, <laughs> it's being taken home. So you expose yourself. So I saw a guy I exposed myself. Yeah. To get, but I didn't know how painful. Yeah, it is. It was. Yeah. And for me, the pain it came with. It's doubled the pain psychologically. It stigma. doubled the pain psychologically. I shrinked. Mm. I was. Oh my God! If you saw me real. Mm. And everyone even was so scared of me more mm. than scared of others. They yeah. are being taken yeah. back home. Because for it. you, the, I, the people are thinking this is not just this is not just chicken pox. This and is the HIV. thing that really hurt me so much that others even they would drive them, but for me they gave me a, a, a guy who was a nice car who put me on a on a on a bicycle, drove rode me up to where you up are to, to go. Oh, you get it. So I went home and uh, my mom of course looked after me mm. and it was so painful. Mm. And everyone says maybe, you know, like the metro used the kind of word, but I'm proud of my that she does leave. What does it's that like mean? you take this child and she does, he doesn't give us HIV. Ah. You get it? Mm. Because of that. Mm. So mm. it was a nightmare. And uh, at the age of, uh, by 97, I cared a lot about my neighbors. Mm. Uh, that time you're 
a bit, you're, you're still like in your early teens. Yeah, no, sir, 97, I'm not even yet in teens. You're not in your teens I'm at a, the time, I'm yeah. about, uh, let's eight, say, eight, nine. Uh, about <coughs> eight nine years mm, mm. and then my my i used to know like our neighbors also they had hiv but they would had it from their children mm. again like the mother of my neighbors was like hiv positive but mm -hmm. they had it from their children ah all right so yeah. every time i play with with their children i'm mm. like by the way mm. we have medicine at home mm. so it's better i get you some medicine and mm. you go and uh, share with, with your, your mom. mom because yeah. i would know i would see mm -hmm. i had so many hiv patients that yeah. would come home because mm. When my mom opened up, mm. so she became like a council of everyone. Yeah, you get it. So everyone yeah. would come to them. Mm. How can I deal with this disease? Mm. How can mm. I do this? Even some of them would come at home and mm. get sick from home, so that my mom can take care of them. Mm. Even some of them died. Mm. You get it. Mm -hmm. So that's how it was. Like mm. they would seek for comfort mm. while they know, you know, and mm. and their stage was rough. And but for you, you're also beginning to see what. Advocacy and advocacy what means. and community engagement and community looks engagement like. Looks like. And that it's a dedication, you know. Yes. I mean, your your sister, your mom here is pushing the envelope fully, like yes. you know, owning the the, the brunt of it. Yes. But also helping others in the and community. Helping other people in the mm. community. So that's how it was. Mm. And at home, all materials, whatever, were all full of uh, HIV, you know, information. HIV information. Yeah. So I remember when I went to school. I carried, uh, you know, like uh, by that time, condoms were advertising in a very sexy way, mm. like protector condoms. Mm. So maybe in Kenya, you have kiss condoms, yeah, trust, and so yeah. many things mm -hmm. like that. So they would bring a lot of posters at mm. home, and they were mm. good for covering books. Yeah, you get it? <laughs> so, so you use them to yeah, cover your so books. I stole the the posters from top, like many of them, <laughs> and uh, my intention was to cover my books. But also sell them. Yeah. So at ah. school, I'd sell, you know, like sell them like about a hundred shillings, a hundred shillings. Yeah. You get it. Mm. And also, uh, so the P7 students used to buy it a lot because mm. like condoms. Yeah. And, and they, by that time they were mature. Yeah. yeah. Like about in the senior three. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, P3. Yeah. So when I used to give them the posters, they'll use them to cover their books. Mm. They even hang them on the on walls, their walls. Yeah. In the case. Yeah. You know, like a sexy girl. Yeah. And a mature girl. Yeah, exactly. Like. So the school was like, who's supply? Who's a supplier of these posters? It's interesting you speak about that because I I, I just reflect a bit. That is in the mid nineties, early yes. mid nineties. HIV at the time there is a lot of stigma. How is the country handling that? A, a, yes. Like sort of like a, from your from your review backwards now yes yes at that moment they, they are becoming as daring as i mean um private sector is becoming as daring, daring. as to to, yes. to to promote condoms in that way yeah. but is government and um you know government-led pro protection programs and uh, prevention programs how are, how are those at the time more at that time you know the president was so much vigorous in mm. fighting hiv mm. Mm. and uh and and also i want to believe that uh uh, the the government that time was not as much rigid mm. the way it is right now mm -hmm. because the president was so much in terms of like we want to end HIV mm. he was a, he's, even now we mm. appreciate him in yeah. Africa he was the mm. biggest champion in fighting yeah. HIV he had like the presidential programs against HIV mm. they were so big he's equivalent of pepper uh -huh. mm -hmm. so mm. it was it, it was strong mm -hmm. and uh, I, when I was growing up I did hear a lot of bias around sexual mm. education for mm. example mm. around protection mm. we had an abc program yeah. whereby you know your young people abstain mm. you're, you're you're married In a be, faithful, be faithful but also use a condom protect mm. yourself mm -hmm. you get it so mm. abc was purely protect like promoted it was a huge it, message it was a huge message that, that everyone yeah. was really promoting mm. Mm. and uh, so the way things are now turning are mm. quite really interesting yeah not the way it yeah, was before. You feel like there is a reversal. Being there is made. a reverse of yeah, everything. Yeah. There is now rigidity. Mm. Uh, the, I, I think maybe, maybe then there were young people, yeah. aggressive and whatever. And they were relating uh, to these issues. And they were issues. relating to the, yeah. the issues. <laughs> yeah, now they're like no longer relating to the yeah, issues. They're like, you kids, uh -huh. you're just so, having sex. <laughs> uh -huh, thank you. So yeah. now that's why when we have a more younger government, mm, mm. better, even sometimes we wonder, you know, yeah. you have parliamentarians that you discuss, they show they're liberal, mm. they're they're more understanding to mm. different things, mm. but when they get there, they mm. kind of become a little bit like averse to these averse, things. Averse to these things. Right. But not everyone. Yeah. 
Let's, so let's when go I back to took back the posters, yeah. <clears throat> so they're like, who's distributing these posters? Mm. They already had a nickname. They would call me a condom man. <laughs> P3. Oh, wow, it? I'm a condom man. Uh, class, because uh, I used to 10 years old, you yes, are a condom. Distribute uh, post, uh, posters yeah. of, of, of uh, co- like condom advertisement. Mm. They even had to send me home wow. because of that. Yeah. You get it? And I didn't find any mm. any problem with it. Yeah. You get it? So mm. when I went back home, of course, even at home now I had a case. Yeah. Because I've been stealing their what? Exactly. Their yeah. advertisement yeah. materials. Their magazines. Their yes. magazines yeah. are taking them to school. Yeah. But for me, that was more of like, okay, I'm spreading knowledge. Yeah, true. And especially, I didn't even, like my reason was, I was not even selling them to my classmates. Mm. I was selling them to, to, the, the, upper to, the, students. to the upper students. Yeah, yeah guys in Who much need this information. Yes. Yeah. So, mm. I think maybe naturally, that's mm. how my, my, my advocacy, my, 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 my passion, mm. Really, mm. you know, engineered because, yeah. teared up because yeah. of, of my parents and yeah. what they were doing. Yeah. So my mom now goes to the UK uh-huh. in 98. Uh-huh. And why she went to the UK, of course, was to seek for further help. Uh-huh. Because she had tried all drugs uh-huh. and nothing would help. Uh-huh. And uh, by the time she went to the UK, she, like her, her body, her body was really weak. Okay. You get it? Like uh-huh. her CD4 account uh-huh. was doing badly. Uh-huh. She was at that verge, uh-huh. you know? Uh-huh. That even I remember like she cried when she was leaving. Uh-huh. It's like she was saying bye to us. Uh-huh. But when she went there, of Is, course... She did, did she go there with a program or... Well, she went there support? to do a conference. She went okay. to Germany for a uh, conference where she okay. met very good will ambassadors. Yeah. Like, you know what? Mm. In the UK, there's a new drug that is mm. on the market and it's for free. Yeah. And in Uganda, it was very expensive to access yeah. that market, yeah. that mm. drug. Mm. So when she went there, she started on the drug and then she's like, okay, let me start working. Mm. She really adhered properly mm. to the drugs. And then life became okay. Mm. In '99, she got pregnant. Oh, you know, with, wow. a, with a partner. Mm. And uh, when she got pregnant, of course, we we're very happy, mm. you know, because that's what she has always like desired, yeah. desired and mm. wanted. Mm. And now, like, they went into uh, giving birth, and mm. she had a free birth, oh. you know, like a baby who's not contaminated. Mm. That's that's very interesting. You know, she was so daring. Like Prevention her, of mother to child transmission was yes. working very well she at the time. Working, it started working mm. well at that mm. time. But this is now this in, is 99. In the US or in, in the, the UK? UK? In the yes. UK, yeah. And then also now they started encouraging mm. women here that yeah. if you're HIV positive, mm. you can give birth because she was using that herself mm. as an example. So she really was, um, she really was like out there yeah, she um, was really out there. Yeah. She is even really out there up to it, now. Yeah. So that for me, now I'm looking at all these steps mm. and how she's able to do things. Mm. I'm reading magazines at home that are full of sexuality mm. and sexual education and mm. whatever, other age. Mm. And then, um, so in 2000, around 1999 and 2000, of course a lot happened. Mm. Um, I had to really, you know, like get into... Uh, the ghetto way, the ghetto spirit now. Uh-huh. You get it now because my sister is not there. Yeah. I'm not even getting like a hundred percent of parental care. Mm. You get it. My brothers, right. they had come to the city as well. Yeah. But all of them were trying to look for a living. Mm. They were where all, the, my brother that I follow is about nine years ahead of me. Ah, man. You all right. It. Yeah. So. So at that time, everyone was like, I took, mm. like any other person mm. from the village to the city, you have mm. to look for something to do. Mm. You get it. So everyone yeah. was trying to, you know, pick up pieces here and there. Mm. So for me, that's when I started working. Mm. And my work that I was doing, I was selling uh, uh, local juice, which is Vushera. Mm. You get it? In the streets. In the streets, to mm. bus passengers, mm. to taxi drivers, mm. to everyone. You get it? And that's what I was doing. And that for me taught me how to value money. Mm. And I started learning money. Yeah. You get it? There are it's things that we currency. were never taught in school. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, you'll be taught business education, but yes, not this kind of value. Money and yeah. value of yeah. money is yeah. never taught in school. Yeah. No one teaches you that you can make money, it. you yeah. can make it, you can mm, save it, you can also it. go, and yeah. how it goes, how do yeah. you come back and get it. Mm-hmm. It's self talk yeah. So the most important part, the, the lady that I was working with, that you make about 4000 at that time, she'll mm. give you 1000 to keep. Mm. And 3000 is invested back in the business. Mm. So the more you sell, the more you get. Mm-hmm. So by the time I finished that business, about like one year mm. and uh, a few months, mm. I'd saved up to about 130,000 shillings. Mm, not bad. You get and it. you are doubling this school? 
that time I was in school. Oh, you actually yes. stepped out briefly? Yes, weekly. I stepped out. And things mm-hmm. were, there are things that happened there. Yeah. You get it. Uh, like, in, like any other person, I say, it's yeah. like losing parents. Yeah. You, my father <coughs> is in the village. <coughs> Everyone is struggling on their own. Mm. And you're like, man, we have tried where you have yeah. tried, so it's yeah. okay. Mm. You get it? Mm. So it's, I was like a trial. Yeah. If you want to pick me, pick me. If you don't if want, not, ah, it's fine. Ever, let's struggle. Mm. We shall come back for you. Mm. So that's how it was. Wow. So my sister as well got to know about it. It's like, mm-hmm. no, Humphrey has to go back to school. Mm. Also at that time, she had settled well in the UK. Mm. So now I went back to school. Mm-hmm. So by the time I went back to school, I had about 130,000. Mm. So when I went back to school, I had to repeat a class. Uh-huh. So I started now from P5. Ooh. That was in 2001. Mm. So when I resumed mm. school, it's like now a COVID child that has been out of school for two years, mm. He has been making some money, yeah. and now you're telling him <coughs> to go back. Schools have reopened, yeah. go back to school. And you won't be making money. And you won't be making money, you, you won't have be free. This much freedom. You, won't be, you get it? Yeah. So my mind, boss, mm. it was more creative. Mm. What can I do for myself? Mm. Because I've been used to looking after myself. Yeah. I've been used to my hustle. Mm. So then my brother was working in a milk factory. I'm like, no, let me join my brother. Mm. So I said, <laughs> I joined my brother. Mm. started now riding milk. Mm. As I'm also doubling it with, with, with juice. school. Oh, with school. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. So now I'd go early in the morning by mm. five because mm. I never. I was living with my brother and the girlfriend, mm. and they had two. They had two children mm. who are twins. Mm. You get. It? So I had to look for an alternative instead yeah. of walking up to wash utensils, fetch mm. water, and whatever. Yeah. Let me Drop also go and bring my money. Yeah. And I'll be doing a bread yeah. every after okay. I'm coming back from mm. school. Mm. So that's how it was. Mm. So I'd wake up at five at round four, mm. go look, fetch water, make mm. sure that water is available. Mm. Then after, go and, uh, and and do the milk vending. Yeah. But unfortunately, the factory uh, closed. Closed. Okay. But what the most important uh, attraction they had mm. was a bicycle. Mm-hmm. You get it. So mm. I would ride the bicycle, mm. and all the shop attendants around Lungja, yeah, they loved me so much. Mm. You get it. I was like a child of everyone. Mm. You get it. Mm. Oh, Humphrey Manafi, you know our mm. child, our child. I'm like, tomorrow. So I'll make my pre orders yeah. on time. Yeah. And they would sell my milk. And mm. even those Indians were like, hey, man, this boy, mm. he has a special touch <laughs> toward things from yeah. one can mm. to a, from one container to now four containers oh, wow. that I was doing every morning. Mm. And I made sure by eight, I'm at school mm. every day. Okay. You get it. And Very I would nice. make my money, I would mm. serve it. Mm. So, the time reached, and uh, even now in Lunguja, when they've closed the factory, of course, I had to look for another alternative. Mm. Cities are developing. Mm. People are building every day. So, you know, I talked to my friend, who is a uh, piece of there in camera, mm. and we were staying together like neighbors. I'm like, boss, what can we do? Mm. You get it. Because you need to feed yourself. You cannot wait for one meal a day. Sure. You have also to get some money, you buy some chindazi, yeah. or <laughs> mandazi. whatever, mandazi, yeah. and yeah. you have some tea, yeah. and you can you wait yeah. until what they have cooked at home. And you're, you, you're having to think about all of this when you're barely breaking into your teens. Yes. Mm. So now we're like, guy, okay, let's, let's, you know what, let's mm. be, since we are good, because we used to fetch water, mm. you know, every morning, every yeah. evening. <coughs> so the energy, the gym was yeah. there. Yeah. So we approached one guy, he was also from uh, the West. He mm-hmm. was starting to build, like, and he's building like very many houses. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what, why can't we be your porters? Mm-hmm. Because we shall make sure it's you fill these tanks yeah. of, with water. Wow. So it's like, okay, every jerry can I'm going to be giving you 200 shillings. Mm. Okay? Mm. And the well was quite far. There's no pipe water, mm. but they have to build. Mm. We're like, no problem, that's what we do every morning. We'll be your labor. Why not? Yeah. Water, 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 water. Mm. You have to make sure at this by the time you say, I am tired. Mm. You yeah. have about like 2,000 shillings in your pocket. Oh, wow. You get it? Mm. So how many jerrycans are those? Those ones? are like 10, and that's yeah. a lot of you get trips, it? yeah. Those are a lot of trips, but mm. you have to carry two. Mm. You get it? So yeah. by the time you're 10,000, they have, you have achieved. Yeah. Now the day can be, mm. okay. Yeah. We would fetch water until the guy says, you guys, stop. stop. You enough. Get it? It's yeah. enough for today. Mm. What do you want to do to us? We're yeah. like, ah, let's also fetch for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that t- tomorrow things can be what? Easier. Can be easier. Mm. Mm. You get That's it? clever. You, and you're beginning to become very ingenious and very socially yes. um, aware, but yeah. also financially aware, hustle aware. Hustle, hustle aware. Mm. So, 
you know at least you dress properly yeah. you, know, you buy your car own no one bought me underwear as up to now yeah you get it mm, mm. unless maybe my sister when is in the uk would send you some boxers yeah, yeah but also you have to think about that yeah you get yeah, it yeah so i started like reprogramming myself mm, ever mm. since then yeah and also not depending on people mm, because mm. i had tired on depending on people yeah yeah you get, everywhere you go they want to toss you around you guys tell us so and if yeah. you don't uh, want that and then you go back to the village that's mm. where my home was in mm. kampala we didn't have a home yeah true because you all get, these are your siblings yes yeah so after that, um, uh, life went on. Mm. So now I'd collected some enough money, mm -hmm. and uh, at home things were not okay. Mm. I'm like, I had to convince my sister. I'm mm -hmm. like, if you can help me raise up this money and I go to boarding. And it was still for primary school? Primary school, mm -hmm. maybe better, because I wanted mm. to go back to boarding. Mm -hmm. Boarding, I felt like more independent. Okay. So my sister agreed to it. I did my shopping because I'd saved some money. Mm. I told my 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 guy Nelson, I'm like, boss, but by me I've gone where? To study. To boarding. Yeah. So I went in boarding in my primary seven, which was because the convincing was, mm. since this is the final class, yeah. it's better uh, being right. boarding. Yeah. But before that, when I was in primary six, um, when uh, almost like to P seven, mm -hmm. like th the last time of mm -hmm. primary six. We, we had uh, counselors that came at school. They mm. were P educators, all mm. they said, the bili chaplains mm. go to schools. Yeah. But these were like doctors, like they were like strong uh, health practitioners yeah. working with Mulago. Mm. So they were talking about HIV. Mm -hmm. They were talking about you know, sexuality education. Mm. They were talking about menstrual hygiene for mm -hmm. girls. Mm. So they were doing the real P education mm. when we were doing it in school. Yeah. So after the, when we were having a whole gathered session, they asked a question. After talking about HIV, mm -hmm. uh, giving a few testimonies, showing us videos. Mm. And it's all, not the scary videos. It was not the, they were the scary videos, okay, of yeah, course. Yeah, because that's the time. That's the time they were that's showing That's how to, videos. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, but I knew, you get it. Mm. I knew what it means yeah. to be HIV. You had first-hand experience. First-hand experience. I had yeah. seen it with my own eyes. Yeah. <coughs> I remember this is a different school, not the school I used to be mm. in. Yeah, so when I went also, to this school, mm -hmm. it was called Queen of Peace. Mm -hmm. I kind of tried to protect not me to be known by people ah, or whatever. Okay. And also, you know, working, you know, like also living in the communities, my esteem had kind of gone down. Yeah. Yeah, I was not really believing so much in myself mm. and what I can do. So mm. I, ca I had kind of even dropped mm. in terms of uh, talking about HIV and mm. all that. And my sister had gone away. So mm. there was not so much as no, as no longer staying with a partner mm. uh, who was uh, who's the father of her children. Mm. So when these guys were talking in the, in, uh, in, uh, in the, in the classroom, mm -hmm. they, after talking and giving all those scary you videos, know, and, videos statistics, and statistics yeah. and mm -hmm. whatever. They'll show us videos and say, anyone with HIV has to die. Yeah, it used to be a death sentence. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So this guy said in this class, who's affected? Because mm. we know that everyone at least has been affected by yeah. HIV. Yeah. You've lost someone due to HIV mm. or you have someone. Or you're living with or someone. Or you're living with who, someone who yeah. with HIV. Mm. So it's like in this class, is there anyone infected or affected mm. by HIV? Mm -hmm. No one was raising up their hands. You get it. Mm -hmm. But remember, the matrons had suspicions. Mm. You get it. The teachers had suspicions. Mm. Ah. So after a few minutes, I raised up my hand. Mm. When I raised up my hand, my girls, even teachers, like, oh my God. You get it. Even the Kagala had a crush on. She laughed. So that kind of, so I had like something that, like, you know, like that wow factor. Mm. That kind of like, what? Mm. What? You get it? Eh? Mm. So even that guy you've been sharing a cloth with, that is like mm. in shock. Mm. So that kind of reaction made me cry. Mm. Remember the mature guy in class? Yeah. Now I've started crying. Mm. Man, and they laughed at me more. And mm. even I cried more. And I was like, I couldn't believe. Mm. So this guy called me, he was called uh, Magezi David. He's now in Denmark. He's my friend. Mm. When he called me, he's like, no, you come in front. Mm. So I went in front, whereby my my confidentiality was destroyed yeah. by that reaction. Yeah. So when I went in front, he says, he told me one thing, he's like, your journey of success is going to start now. Wow. 
that's the word he told me mm. and now i can see what it meant mm. he's like so he made everyone quiet mm. he's like how is going to share with us a story mm. and i believe that story is what has made him cry mm. and he knows the reason why mm. he's crying mm. boss i told them the journey of hiv oh you shared i shared with them the I- journey that you had experience of hiv mm. that had experience mm. and i remember telling them that some of you have opportunities that but you misuse it mm. <coughs> you get us psychologically even i thought as a child because mm. i was not mentioning it as if that someone had it i yeah. was like i have it mm. have experienced it mm. and what it means mm. you get us which i even don't know about mm. yeah. they have because My mom has always told me that mm. I'm not a child of poverty. Yeah. yeah, you've never had seen her suffer. Yeah. You get it. Mm-hmm. Most of my family members died in the 80s mm. of HIV mm. whereby at that time it was more of a rumor there's mm. uh, there's a disease. There's this deadly Though disease. There was corona. Yeah. There was a Chinese disease. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you understand but all of them were dying one mm. by yeah. one. Yeah. Back after uh, back to back. Back to back. Mm. I'm like you don't know how HIV mm. it is. I remember after my talk because it was in a more emotional mm. angry mm. way. Mm. Those who were laughing were crying. Oh. You get it. Mm. Struck. Those in the upper class were even like clapping for me the boys of yeah. like, man you've you done struck it. the right chords yeah. Mm. You get it. Mm. And after this man told me in your if you finish P7 mm. These are my contacts. Mm. I sit in Mlago look for me. Oh, oh okay. You get it. Mm. The Humphrey that was in school timid, quiet, which got this boost of confidence got this now. boost of confidence. Mm. I started moving my head up. They started calling me a school counselor, peer counselor. Oh, wow. wow. This is in 2002. Yeah. Acquired because you, you have it. done it, uh, not yes. n- you're not coming with the title. I'm not coming with the yeah. title. Mm. In my primary 7 we were getting into elections. I said I will stand for the high position head mm. boy. Became a head boy and immediately. Oh wow. Yes. That's for that required you to campaign and vote. Yes. Oh. Not wow. required me. Mm. It inspired me. Yeah. The confidence I had got mm. the 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 good appeal I had got from the from yeah. from everyone <coughs> I had to campaign. Mm. You get it for the highest position. Mm. And everyone gave me votes. You get it. Every morning I would on assemblies I would talk to the school. Mm. Now they are saying researching yeah. what the young people go drugs <coughs> they escape out of school mm. whatever so I'd encourage them let's read our books let's do this let's do the other you mm. know like mm. a counselor mm. how he does mm. talking to my fellow students mm. now I started debating mm. Mm. I didn't even know that good English but yeah. I, would, I had confidence whether I could remember go yeah. <laughs> I don't care <laughs> yeah, I don't know broken English yeah so now I finished school yeah. uh, primary section mm-hmm. uh, in my vacation I mm-hmm. go to uh, Uh, this uh, the doctor friend of mine mm-hmm. who was a peer counselor as well yeah so actually he was still a student but mm-hmm. a peer counselor at mm-hmm. that time i'm like hey. a medical student yeah okay mm-hmm. so i'm like you told me to look for you mm. so i'm here mm-hmm. so i reminded him I'm yeah like, oh yeah i was surprised yeah to see me mm. and i remember the day I move i made because i was looking forward to go and meet him mm. when i got done with my primary seven i didn't have enough money yeah i had to walk like for about an hour and 30 minutes wow from lunguja to mlagu it was a mm. quite a distance mm. uh but you have to you know you keep walking slowly by mm-hmm. slowly because mm. you might like here everywhere you can walk yeah so when i got there i was so sweaty mm. i was so dusty mm. so i told him is like you man you're so daring mm. you you've get come it? all the way you've come all the way mm. it's like no worries we have an association we have started up Mm-hmm. It was called Mlago Pia 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 Educators Association. Mm-hmm. So basically to go into schools mm-hmm. and talk to, you know, to mm-hmm. people and mm-hmm. here. Then also there was another organization as well that I went to in my P7 work that started up an organization called the Youth Watch. Mm-hmm. Organization. Mm-hmm. So I used to work for both of them. Mm-hmm. But also so much I would ask myself what value is coming with mm-hmm. me. 
again, remember being into the HIV sector. Yeah. I know mo most of people are calling me son and mm. they are working yeah. with different organizations mm. and whatever. Mm. So now it started becoming like a linkage mm. between this organization and the other one. with those people. Mm. You get so every time, hey mom, there's some people I want you to come and mm. meet now. Mm. Also, it was like I was so proud to be yeah. associated with them. Absolutely. Now work for this. We are talking yeah. about HIV. <coughs> We'd love to see if, how we can work with you. Mm -hmm. So I would associate with them in a mm. way that I have I know people. Mm. Yeah. Do you understand that? I am bringing my currency. I am bringing my, no, yeah. I am bringing my valuable my, partners. My network is my, my network. network. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So now that would plus me. Yeah. From getting three thousand as a transport refund, five k. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Do you understand yeah. that? Which was good. Mm. So we used to go in churches, mm -hmm. we used to go in communities, mm -hmm. and every time I'd make sure that I'm the most active mm. person. In my life, what I've been taught, mm. everything is possible. Mm. It becomes impossible when you have an attitude of them being impossibilities to you. Mm. So in my language or in my tongue, there's mm -hmm. no word I cannot do it. Mm. Impossible is, I am possible. I am possible. Mm. Everything is possible. Everything mm. can be done with or without money. Yep. So I started doing that peer education, mm -hmm. that is in my P7, I mm. was getting some money. Mm. You know, I started even renting for myself like a wow. small a small bathroom Cute. house. Mm. Uh, please remember that uh, where I used to find me that side. So I got a bathroom from a landlady. And then we decided, because when I was staying, it was more of a, how can I say, you've been like more in a slum community ghetto, so mm -hmm. there are houses packed together. Yeah. So like like any other rich man who builds like a, a main house, mm -hmm. but on the side there are very many houses mm -hmm. whereby they are all rentals. Mm -hmm. So that's how it was, so mm -hmm. that's where I was okay. uh, from 2000, uh, 2001 till mm -hmm. 2004, mm -hmm. 2006. Which is most of your high school? Which is most of my, part of primary, primary and also part seven. of uh, yeah. high school. Mm -hmm. So now the landlady had, uh, you know, like a, like a big bathroom. Mm -hmm. So it was like an executive bathroom. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, boss, there are not so many people who are paying executive. Mm. You get it? Mm. This car house here can be used. Why don't you rent it to me at mm. about like, let's say, 20K? Mm. And I'd be, you know, mm. I put in my car bed and whatever. Mm. Mm. Because also my sister and brother, they had like another main house they were renting. Yeah. And my brother at that time had also joined my mom in the UK. Mm -hmm. So now I wanted to be more independent. Mm. You get it? Yeah. yeah. So <coughs> I started now sleeping by myself mm. in that small, but mm. it was very hot. <laughs> you get it? At night it's very cold. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I was independent. Mm. So and at a very young age. At a very young age. Mm. So at that time, now when I got into the NGO space, mm -hmm. now I, I fit in so well as a peer educator. Mm. I would train, attend every training, mm. I would attend every meeting, yeah. I was there every day. Including evenings. If, if, yeah, like mm. learning. Mm. So, gladly enough, I performed well in my P7. Mm -hmm. I went to uh, one of the good schools in uh, Jinja. Mm. It's called Kira College of Tiki. Mm. And government we, owned? It was a government, mm -hmm. a government owned school. Mm -hmm. So, and it's a, it was one of the best performing schools right. at that time. Mm -hmm. Uh, so my guardian, my guardian father is the one that got me the mm. placement. So I mm. went there with him. Um, so when I got there, I started now school. Mm. So now it's like again I've been handcuffed mm. again. Yeah. But now I have to identify opportunities. Mm -hmm. Now I, I say, okay, there's how many clubs do we have here mm. in this school? Mm. There was Interact, which is more of entertainment. Mm -hmm. Uh, there were like other environmental clubs, I'm not so drama, much about, scouts. drama, scouts, and so many things. Mm. So, me, I joined an AIDS association. Mm -hmm. There was Youth Alive. Mm. So, Youth Alive was also a youth organization at that time. Mm. I, joined, uh, I joined an AIDS association, also, it was an organization at mm. that time. Then I joined Youth Alive. Mm. Then, also, now I, be, I also became a scout. I joined also drama. Oh, wow. So, you're scheduled. For the time, I mean, in a school term, in a school year, was absolutely packed. Yeah, so it mm. was packed. So as mm. more, so when I was in those clubs, mm. I befriended so much of the patrons, mm. and the patrons, the value I'd come with mm. networks. Yeah, 
you get it mm. so i've made networks i'm mm. like I, I have these organizations i'm working with mm. so in my senior one uh, term my first time at mm -hmm. that school in mm. the holidays mm. i had to visit youth alive mm -hmm. i had to visit and is mm. those organizations mm. and i'm like i'm humphrey i'm a peer educator mm. i'm also one of the club members where in, in the school, school. Yeah. but all i wanted was to understand what programs we have for schools mm. So that when I go back the second time, yeah. I can go with some schedule yeah. on what we can do mm. together. Yeah. You get it? And also now I became so much proud of <coughs> oh sorry. I became so much <coughs> it's not COVID, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I became so much proud of my parents mm. because they were known <coughs> mm. in these organizations. Yeah. Yeah. So whenever I used to go and introduce I am the son of so and so. Yeah. Then they open ears. Everyone is. Hey, yeah. do you know you want to yeah. be like your mother? I can see you're, you're joining. The, I'm like, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, no. Mm. Uh, so you come. You, this mm. man of ours is a very active boy. Mm. So see on how you can engage their school and mm. see. Mm. Now I'd go back with news to my new, patrons. Yeah, new partners. You get it. Yeah. Now my patrons, <laughs> yes, this boy is active. So now what I did, I mapped out schools in Jinja. In the, where where my school was. So I tell my patron, I want to enlarge the outreach. Um, these guys have given me a letter to go and be checking out on different and AIDS clubs mm. and youth alive as their coordinator mm. in Eastern region. Wow. But that letter, I wrote it myself. Mm. <laughs> you guess it? <laughs> eh? uh, Presented it as if it's coming from where? From, from the organization. From the organization. Mm. But me, I want to enlarge my outreach. Yeah. <coughs> so I go to these schools. I'm like, I'm the coordinator of these clubs. I'm here to, to talk to the students and whatever. And also, if I can schedule a time and I talk to the senior one students uh, about issues around HIV and uh, also to see on how the club is performing. All right? Mm. They're like, no, it's okay. It's fine. You get it. So at mm. that time, there were no smartphones. Yeah. Okay? Mm. But there were camera people. That would mm. take pictures. There were small, like digital yeah. cameras that had. Those ones that would print in seconds. Uh -huh, mm. No, not in second. Those ones mm -hmm. had not yet come. Mm. Those ones that you put in a computer, like with a flash. Ah, okay. It's around like 2000, and uh, actually, on a, on a, was it called a disc? Had, um, uh, uh, floppy disk. Floppy disk. Yeah, 3.4 yeah. 3. Uh -huh. KB. <laughs> yes. So there's a guy I knew in Ginger who had it. Mm. I said, now I want to go to each school. Because when I was there, I'm like, I hope also when after talking to the students, the club can facilitate me. Mm. Yeah, Even if they give me 50,000 or mm. 20,000, it's mm. enough. Mm. So now, the first school I went to was a girls' school. Mm. Now they had convinced the head prefect of my school to come with me. Mm. Remember, I'm in senior one, this guy's in senior, senior five. Form. Yeah. Mm. Like wow. an upper. Mm. It's like, how did he get an opportunity to go to that school? Mm. I'm like, no, I'm going to talk to the club members. Mm. But all I wanted was now to earn his favor yeah. so that I'm well protected where? Yeah. At school. Mm. And also to get permission through him mm -hmm. to go where? Mm. For him, his intention is to go and see girls. Yeah. <laughs> Me, my intention is to go and enlarge my network. Yeah. I'm like, how? Mm. So went to the school, they even welcomed us. Mm. And the good thing is about our school, we put on layers. So you get it. What so, do you mean by <coughs> We didn't have like a um, we uniform. didn't have like a casual uniform. Okay. So you take your clothes, mm. either jeans or whatever. Mm. That's oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. So when I went there, I started now talking to schools. Mm. So when I was talking to schools, when I was leaving, mm. I got about uh, fifty thousand, which was an equivalent to twenty dollars at that time. Mm. Because it was good money. Mm. So I paid the cameraman mm -hmm. twenty thousand. I remained with thirty what? Yeah. Thousand. I came at school. Mm. Mm. You get it. So mm. every weekend now, I said, get going a new to school. schools. Mm. Every weekend mm. to schools. Others mm. are going to party, to mm. whatever me, I'm going mm. to schools yeah. to do my outreach. Yeah. Now, when I went back to an AIDS association and youth alive mm. with pictures, mm. I'm like, I've been visiting, your, I've been doing a lot of coordination in mm. schools. Mm. I think I can be a good coordinator for mm. you. Mm. Already I've been using their names as yeah. their coordinator. <laughs> now I want an official... With a letter that... Uh, with a letter that's original. You wrote, yeah. Yes, they're like, mm. ah, ah, you're very... They've been doing all this. I'm like, yes. Mm. It's like, now, no, no, now we have got our coordinator mm. in the eastern region. Mm. You get it. So yeah. good enough, also, uh, my favorite doctor, mm. David, yes. was also now working for Aunt Eyes Association. Mm -hmm. So now... Oh. It's Everything enlarged. is coming Everything together. Everything now comes together. Mm. 
So in Jinja, I mapped out organizations that are working with uh, on HIV. There was SPW, which is mm. now Restless Development. Yeah. Uh, there was uh, uh, there was uh, AIDS Association Center mm -hmm. and so many other things. So I had connected with all those organizations mm. to our club schools. Now also through the schools are going to as going with more value. Yeah. You get mm, it? Absolutely, yeah. So my outreach started now growing mm, in that mm, format. Mm. But in performance, I wasn't doing well. Mm. Because I think I was concentrating so much on my passion yeah. than less concentration in class. In class yeah. I said, you know what? Let me always study. Let mm. me balance. Even mm. if I'm a mediocre, it's okay. Mm. You get it? God is what? Then mm. who knows? Mm. But I'd make sure I don't get a nine or, mm. or a pass eight. Mm -hmm. At least from pass seven and above. I'm yeah, balanced. equivalent of... Nine is the equivalent of what D? Failure. Okay, which is Fail. a D. Yeah, yeah. Fail D. All right. Ah, okay. So it was mm -hmm. more like that. Mm. So I continued doing this. In senior three, I stood for prefectship. Mm. I thought I would pass. Mm. But because uh, students, I was a friend of teachers, they thought I was a snitch, I was a snake, ah. and all that. Mm. But for me, as strategic, I knew the reason mm. to why. Mm. You get it? So I would, I would not be there to please my fellow students, mm. yet the teachers can be my friends, mm. and also I can do work for them. Mm. But at the end of the day, they are giving me all these permissions mm. to go mm. and do my outreach programs. Yeah. So I, when I stood, of course, they decampaigned me so badly even my fellow mm. classmates. Wow. They didn't want me to be a prefect because mm. they think I would snitch them all the time. Mm. But I've never snitched anyone and I've never mm. been a snitch. Mm. So, but I'll snitch you if you do bad manners. <laughs> yeah. You get it? Like, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So after that, I, I, I felt so bad mm. that I didn't become a school counselor mm. or a prefect. Mm. I'm like, okay. But I'm a strong guy in clubs, mm. so what more can I do? Mm. I started up an association of all clubs. Mm. You understand that? <laughs> because they were like, so what's the purpose? I'm like, I'm the Mr. Connector. Mm. You get it? An the need for this club that yes. can be met by this other uh -huh. one. So an association is to have a governing council mm. that can govern all these clubs. Mm. You get it. Mm. So you, you're finding challenges to go out of the school to go and do outreach. Mm -hmm. This association can lobby for you mm. from the headmaster. Mm. You get it. So like you, you are putting position with, it, uh, positioning it. myself. I'm mm. like also at the end of the year we can mm. do one joint yeah. party so mm. that we don't have to waste a lot of resources. Yeah, on individual. Yes, ones, at yeah. that time I was the president of mm. an association. Mm. I was the chairman of Youth Alive mm. because those are the clubs that I used to manage. Mm. And also there was a new project that was starting mm. called the World Starts with Me program. Yeah. So when the World Starts with Me program started, mm. in Kiyako Yutiki, I was the one invited mm. to go in a co-creation workshop, mm. the way like the one we had. Mm. You get it, to mm. create, like to talk about this, about mm. sexuality and whatever. Mm. Mm. And the one who selected me was the organizations that I was working with. Mm -hmm. You get it, so mm. I went there as a young person. Mm -hmm. So I fought so hard for my school to be one of the pilots. Mm schools of what has with of me, has with me. Mm. and what has with me by that time it mm. was coming some kind of good money yeah. donating computers to the school mm. hey, the headmaster was like who is this one ah ah let's have an association of what yeah. of clubs because yeah. Humphrey is doing a lot of good lobby yeah. mm. and also it was coming of tra teachers of you know training teachers mm. exactly. doing what yeah. and also teachers now be so now even these guys who are giving me, it's like, boss, whatever you're doing now, we can mm. see it has come to life. Mm. Now yeah. we are the ones also going to schools and yeah. whatever, and workshops, mm. and mm. they were getting per diems. Mm. Hey. Mm. They and were like, this is amazing. And this is high school. This is high school. Mm. So, Which is interesting, just a little caveat there. The World Starts With Me program mm. for, I think a lot of people who are in, who've continued working and are now either leading organizations or you know have taken a path around advocacy yeah. or um, activism yes. or even public health a lot of genesis is the world starts with me program yes, especially yes. people who are in school in the early 2000s uh -huh. that program has had quite a mm -hmm. serious dent I've, yeah. I've listened and uh, spoken with a couple of people who all trace back their origins mm -hmm. <laughs> you know to the world starts with yes, me program yes. yeah which is a, it was just not termed that way, but it was a comprehensive sexuality education very, program. Very comprehensive. Yeah. And then after, when we started up that program in school, it was more beneficial. Mm. Now remember, our computer lab was seen like heaven. Mm. Now this program is within the computer world. Mm. I'm not a prefect, but I have access and control of the computer lab. Yeah. So you have to be my friend. Mm. 
-hmm. And also now, so I say these classmates of mine are, uh, let me start with the senior ones and senior twos mm -hmm. who are fresh. <laughs> you understand that? Yeah. So you said now having, you know, kids on this program, learning about their bodies, learning mm -hmm. about themselves was mm -hmm. a very interesting one. Mm -hmm. Uh, we had even consultants, you know, mm. coming from whatever to come and talk to us. Mm. Like so many things that happened, and it came with so many opportunities. Mm. So at that time, I became the president of clubs. Mm -hmm. a uh, very strategic, a very strategic move to movement. Do your, yeah. Started by an association started by me. Yeah, I report to the DOS, yeah. deputy headmaster, yeah. and the headmaster himself. Yeah, you get it. So is is politics like beginning to interest you at this time because a lot of that calls i mean that's a politics and governance kind yes. of role yeah uh -huh. mm -hmm. no no i'm not interested in politics mm. and i think and i pray i'll never be interested mm -hmm. in politics i'd love to push to support politicians to yeah. push policies that change mm. and I, I believe that we all have different ways of serving yeah. the country and yours is and not for politics. me it's not politics but what i'm doing is what yeah. is serving the country yeah, yeah. okay all right fair enough so when I became the president, mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, some people were not happy. Others had to just bear with it. Mm. Others were happy. Yeah. Uh, so I made sure that I don't fail myself. Mm. We did a mega clubs party that they have never seen mm. in that school. I brought dancers, I brought musicians. I brought and you had the networks. Because, so I had the networks. Yeah. So after, and also remember, I used to stay at school. I never used to go back home. School was like my home. Yeah. You get it. Mm. Even holidays, I would mm. stay at school. Mm. That was allowed? Yeah, it was allowed. If like, I mean, international if students, well, yeah. like students yeah. from Tanzania, so I'd rather stay with them. Yeah. Okay. Kampala had no home. I'd rather mm. go back to the village mm. and find my father. Mm. Oh, mm. you know, I stay at school. Yeah. And that's how it was. Mm. So, in uh, now when it comes to uh, my senior three, mm -hmm. Uh, like senior three there, then senior four I've joined uh, in my vacation. Mm -hmm. So there was a new TV starting. Mm. Uh, if you've heard about NBS, mm -hmm. so NBS that's the National Broadcasting National right? Broadcasting Service. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but at that time it was called Nile Broadcasting Service. Mm -hmm. uh, Nile Broadcasting Service, right? Uh, so it has started from Ginger. Mm. So when it started from Ginger, then later it went to Kampala. Yeah. So it went to Kampala, you know, people was telling me, there's this new TV that has come up, man. I want to be a TV presenter. I'm like, that's what, what I've always also dreamed, mm. you know, to be. I also want to be a TV presenter. Mm. But I don't want to be a TV presenter of showbiz. Mm. I want to be a TV presenter to enrich my outreach. Yeah. You get it? Mm. Then also a story that I hadn't told you before, when mm -hmm. I was in senior three, mm -hmm. because I, even in holidays, I used mm -hmm. to do a lot of uh, my active work, yeah. you know, mm. go to organizations and whatever, mm. Vichy, mm. and all that. And then I'd invite my friend, there was some my friends that I grew up with, uh, mm -hmm. Nelson, then there was me, uh, another guy, Miingo. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, guys, I have this kind of special group, mm -hmm. yeah? They're the, 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 the very special group, but when I'm facilitating, they're kind of boring. Mm -hmm. So I want you guys to go and fit within them, but this is a special group of young people living with HIV. Mm -hmm. So when you go there, don't brag that you don't have what? Mm -hmm. HIV. If it means to pretend, at least yeah. you pretend. Yeah. You get it? But I want your hands to be up, yeah. asking me questions, yeah. what? Yeah. So that I feel like I have a very... You're engaged. I'm engaged. Yeah. <laughs> because my bosses are going to be there, what? Mm -hmm. Watching me facilitate. They mm -hmm. say, don't worry. Mm. The, and I'm like, but there's also like a transport refund of 10k. Yeah. And they're like, okay, fine. Now mm. this that's our payment. Mm. Yeah. So they came in a in a workshop as facilitating and whatever. I'm like, okay, yeah. So Nelson, tell me. He's like, oh yeah, for me when I say I'm HIV positive, when I start, when I go to know, you get also like now to mm. also make these guys open up yeah. because the issue was about self discovery. Yeah. When did you know and how did mm. you handle the situation? Mm. So these guys had propped them the whole night on how they are going to. Mm. And at the end of the workshop, literally everyone had opened up. Mm. You get it? Yeah. So it was more strategic. Mm. You get it? Mm. As I also like acted as a thief, <laughs> but in a way of having everyone be free about yeah. who, how they are living. And It was conversation yes, starters. And after yeah. that, the guy was like, wow. Mm. I didn't even go for trainers or trainee, mm. uh, uh, training. training. Mm. Immediately, I became a TOT mm. to start training people who are going to, to train. To train. Yeah. So coming back now to the TV scenario on how now I joined into media. Mm -hmm. um, so when that happens, 
business life. You know what? If we have so many networks, at least you do these things. You get mm. it? Mm. So let's go and you strategically mm. talk to them. Mm. You get it? Mm. So I'm like, fine. So we go to uh, NBS at that time. Very mm. small TV, mm. no, no infrastructure, mm. no water. People were trying also to, to get to there. Start, yeah. mm. So the guy asked us, so what are you guys going to do? We're like, we're going to do a youth show. Mm. You get it? What are you going to do? You know, we don't even have money to do a what? Mm. A youth show. Mm. So I told him, it was called Chris Wanovel. I told mm. him that I've been in over 280 schools you had at that time. Wow. You get it? Now that you put numbers to it, that's, that's a lot. Yes. Mm. And these are all over the country. Because now with World Starts With Me, I've moved yeah. to more schools. Yeah. You wow. get it? So, I'm like <coughs> 600 times 280 schools with about 170,000 people. Mm. Young children, young people that have reached. So, me being on TV, everyone will be like, hey, that boy, what my young who came to school? Yeah. Yeah. And they will start following your television. Mm. So meaning that in a year, <laughs> yeah, you are very clever. <laughs> I would have doubled because I'm not stopping to go where? Yeah, to, to schools. schools. Yeah. And on top of that, mm. I am working in every NGO that you know. Yeah. That works on issues of reproductive health mm. and HIV. Mm. All those are going to be your advertisers. Mm. It's like what? I'm like yes, I'm going to work towards it. Who is your advisor this time? No one. Your your sister? No, even that time I was not even talking so much with my sister. Mm. It was more of like seeing you as a child who's growing, mm. you're involved in this, you love money too much, <laughs> I pray that you don't do drugs. So mm. you get it, like a yeah. parent... She's, she's more concerned about She's you. more concerned yeah. about me. Mm. But I know where I'm at, mm. I'm headed. Mm. So, when we get there, the man was excited, we got a job and we started presenting with Piso. I think at that time was a class ahead of me, like two classes ahead of me, mm. joining uh, an institute. Mm. And for me, I wanted to continue what? Study. Mm. So I'm like, boss, if I go to school, you have to protect my position. Mm. At least every weekend I can come, I pass by and, mm. you know, and then go back where? Mm. to school. So we start now the TV journey. So when we start the TV journey, immediately the TV would see us now, we are covering workshops, we are covering teenagers, we are going to school, we are excited about our performance. You get it? Mm. And here, we are even using our own resources. Mm. You get it? I worked for TV, NBS TV for about four years with no pay. With no pay. And people are seeing you. And they are seeing and believing you. You have to that be you smart. Have, yeah. Every morning we'd go to Owino Market. I don't know if they know about Owino Market. It's the equivalent of Agi Komba. Uh -huh, like mm. very early at five when mm. they are have bringing Bales. in mm. the water, when they are opening mm. new so that we can mm. pick out the best. Mm. And you the cheapest, it? yeah. And the mm. cheapest mm. price. Mm. And we used to, I said we're going to fake it until we make it. Mm. I told my friend there, I'm like, what we are getting is not money. Mm. What we are getting is a platform. Mm. You get it? My title has changed. I'm a TV presenter on NBS. I'm also a peer educator, which mm. is, a, even at that time, no one knew about NBS. Mm. Our fans were in the suburbs, mm. what, where, but mm. at least mm. there's a, some Kanyuka channel that has come, it's showing movies, mm. has this, you get it? Mm. So I told my friend, we have to be more strategic enough. Mm. We, have, we need a beautiful girl in the mid between <laughs> both of us. Mm. Because now that is going to attract people More. to watch. Yeah. Our topics are kind of boring. You're mm. not going to be talking about HIV all the time, mm. youth unemployment and mm. so many things. Mm. So let's blend with entertainment, mm. but let's have an attractive person. Mm. We get a very beautiful girl. She's called Anita. Now she's in the US. Mm. We start presenting with her. Mm. Our show was nearly the most watched show. Mm. Every man was like, hey, you're the one with the beautiful girl. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> How can I get the number? Yeah. You got a partial no phone because mm. that time phones are very expensive. Mm. So we present, we present, we present. So I go to school and I go to HSC, which mm -hmm. is a higher level. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I get time on the weekends, I come, I do, mm. I go back. I mm. come, I do, I go back. Mm. Now in my school now, I now I change the school from uh, Kira College Boutique to another school. Mm -hmm. Now I, I, when I was doing like, uh, so I tell the headmaster, I'm like, I'm going to be advertising your school. Mm. Mm. On TV? On TV. Mm. So give me like a percentage of mm. your school fees. Mm. It's like, oh, mm. okay, okay, let me see. Mm. Ah, he's like, okay, mm. I'll watch and then see. Mm. Then I started telling my man every time, talk about Namembe Hillside. Mm. Talk about Namembe Hillside. Talk about mm. Namembe Hillside. Mm. So, so I go there, I start talking about it. Like, hey, maybe yes, let's give this man a what? 
a discount. A discount. Mm. But all I was fighting for that in case I perform badly, they mm. don't chop me off. Yeah, true. You get it. Mm. But at least they will say, ah, this man is valuable. Let yeah. us continue with what? Mm. With mm. him. Mm. So when that really happened, mm. um, in second term, so I used to do like debates. I used to uh, tell Nelson every time like we have a school activity, let's say like uh, we have dance competition and whatever, we come and cover the content is on TV. Mm. So promoting your what? Mm. The school. So after after a moment like that, um, in, uh, in, 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 my, in our second term, mm -hmm. in my prep uh, S5, mm -hmm. now I earn back my position of becoming a head prefect. Oh. You get it? As mm. we are debating. Mm. I know I brought also the same strategy that I was using in the former school mm. of all clubs combined together right. and all this and uh, every Sunday I bring in like guests in different churches. Mm. I was so much friendly now with the musicians, the ex so I bring them at school mm. and also most of them we had known from yeah. that uh, way back hustle. Yeah. So we started school like that. Mm. Then in my senior six VAC I felt so free. Uh -huh. When I, high school, when mm. I was done with high school, mm. I felt so free. Around 17? Now, there I was about like uh, 19 years. 19, okay. 19, 20 mm. actually. Mm. So I felt so free mm. from from everything. Mm. I felt like now I can dive in, I can create mm. new mm. things. Mm. Now there and was, you're clearing high school. Yeah. When you already have such vast networks, such yes, vast experience. Vast experience. Mm. So what I didn't even talk about was my father, when he was sick, he was brought to the city. Mm -hmm. So when I was brought to the city, of course, my mom said she had one house, like, let my father be there. Mm. So now we started staying with him. Mm. I learned a lot of things from him. I learned a lot of stories from him. Mm. So Your elderly father? My father, yeah, mm. my elderly father. Mm. So in, uh, I, we got a very special bonding together. Mm. So in 2009, that's when I got done with high school. Mm -hmm. And then I had to apply for a job mm. because I needed a job. Mm -hmm. And the job I got was coordinating organize, six organizations as a peer coordinator, mm -hmm. working on their youth programming because there was a network that was invented called Uganda Network for Sexuality Education Mainstreaming. Mm. So I was there as their, like a young focal person. Mm -hmm. So when I was working there, it exposed me so much. So I started up now an organization, a CBO, mm. called the Rural Youth Voice Project. Mm -hmm. So Youth Voice was the name of the TV show, mm -hmm. but then the Rural Youth Voice, so I wanted the young people to have a voice, a voice yeah. to speak out on issues that really matter, mm. to speak out on issues on today's pregnancy, mm. like also to really help out my young people in mm. my village. Mm -hmm. So that's the idea that I had. Yeah. So I drove it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But of course, you're driving it, but also utilizing your networks of mm. like, this is what I'm doing yeah. and all this. Mm. So in 2010, mm. I get my first opportunity to be invited to the Netherlands. Mm. Uh, to it's fresh from high school. Yeah, for mm. a conference called mm. Sexuality Under 18. Mm. Trust me when I went there. Mm. The first time I started now planning. At that time, my father had passed on. Mm. So him passing on is like now I'd gone back the way I was in 1999. At the very beginning, yeah. Or at the very beginning. Mm. Whereby, they, you know when someone is sick and you're looking after them, if they eat guinness, you eat. Mm. You get it. If they send money, they will send you. Mm. You don't want to you know, manage. But mm. now that is all taken away. Mm. You get it. So at that time, when I got this opportunity, trust me, I wanted to go and stay in the Netherlands. Like any other Africa. Mm. So when I went there, of course, this now went like with EDs. You mm. know, the EDs have been meeting, mm. Siju RHU, Siju Straight Talk, mm. uh, School Net Uganda, you know, Restless Development. Mm. We went like with EDs, and so we are the youth representative from mm. Uganda. Mm -hmm. There was a friend of mine called Winnie. <coughs> so when we went together, we, we sat, mm. uh, we listened. Now we started seeing, I started seeing how these guys are lobbying. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. presenting their projects, presenting this. Mm. Even at the time when I was leaving Uganda, I said bye bye to everyone. Mm. The only thing I left behind protected is like, ah, this job, in case I come, I can start yeah. from there. I sold most of my stuff <coughs> I had. Even my brother did a very huge dinner for me because mm. he knew the mission. Mm. So when I was there, I saw, I'm like, okay, I think my organization can do better. Mm. Now, instead of me talking about, what I've achieved from Wild Sass with me, 
I started talking about what I am starting. Yeah. I've achieved, but I am st- I've already started You're formalizing this. it. Yeah. I want to formalize it. Mm. I want to do it better, and I mm. need your support. Mm. Mm. In case. Mm. So, and they're like, okay, which support do you need? Mm. I'm like, I need support to go and study. Mm. You get it. I need support that I go back and I can complete my university, mm. uh, my like Education, I can start yeah. university and complete mm. it. I want mm. to do community psychology. Mm. And what inspired me to do community psychology was mm. because most of the public health practitioners that we had, mm. call them like educators, yeah. were, are we okay? Okay. We cut. Thank you.